Marshall Memorial Museum getting national attention right now. It received the highest recognition level from the group that gives museums their accreditation. We're joined now live by chairman of the Oklahoma City National Memorial Foundation, Mike Turbin. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Um, um, thanks, for, uh, <clears throat> thanks for having me. Yes, but, of course. But I happen to know you're from Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> So I Where are we to, taking this? Yes. No, I wanted to get that in. I wanted to say congratulations to you. Thank I, you. I have a lot of friends in Ada, Oklahoma, Governor Bill Anatubby at the Chickasaw Nation, Jeff Bell over at Legal Shield, and John Hargrave at East Central University. That's your yes, town. Yes, that's my town. Those are my people. Yeah, very proud to be an Ada Cougar for sure. But thank you for being with us. Okay, I'll, uh, do, I'll do, quit talking about Ada. Okay. Do you want to say, though, I went through the museum mm -hmm. um, just a few weeks ago. I was oh blown God. away. Um, you know, it just sensory overdrive. It's so powerful. You must be so proud we are. of the museum. We are. Carrie Watkins is our leader there, and she's she's been she was the number one employee hired down there, and she's the executive director, and she's kind of our heart and soul, mm -hmm. and uh, we all uh, you know follow her lead. But I'm proud to be the chair of the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum, and I'll just tell you since you asked me about 21 years ago, the bomb went off in Oklahoma City. And we're very proud of how Oklahoma City reacted back then. We call that the Oklahoma Standard, how we all pulled together and reacted. In fact, you saw when you toured the museum and looked at the incredible memorial that uh, essentially we turned our darkest hour into our finest hour mm -hmm. 21 years ago. And that helped lead to the renaissance of Oklahoma City. People come from all over the world now to see how did Oklahoma City rebuild itself. And part of it was how we reacted to that horrible tragedy, the bombing 21 years ago. Yeah, and if you haven't gone through the museum, you absolutely have to check it out, especially if you live here. Tell us about this recognition that you just got. What kind of honor is this? Well, it makes us feel good about what we're doing. I mean, we already did, but this is kind of an objective um, group that travels the country, the American Alliance for Museums. And they come in and they tell you, look, you need to employ best practices here. We're gonna review everything you've done and see if you've done just that. And they came back and told us that you've employed the highest professional standards in the application of education, public service, stewardship, and educational and institutional advancement. And I'll stop right there because I want to get a name in. Carrie Watkins, I got her name in, and Claude Duncan is our number one volunteer down there. She helped us with this whole process, as, as did the whole team. But John Rochelle is the current, I think, chairman of the board at Devon. And John and I co-chaired a campaign to raise $20 million to help renovate the museum. And they pointed out in this report that you're asking me about this morning that we have more and more and more technology, technology, more than any museum in the country. We're a model now. And so you've been there, so I just want yes. to say this. We're high tech, but we're also high touch. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of interactive exhibits now that appeal especially to, to the young that. people. Well, go ahead. Yes, no, it's just, it's very interactive. You see the live news footage that was there. Right. You're surrounded by evidence and witness accounts. I mean, it's just, it is mind blowing what y'all right. have done there. Right, thank and you. Tell we're, me, we're very proud of all that. Good, good, mm -hmm. as you should be. How many museums received this honor that you guys just received? Well, all over the country, the, the, uh, the answer to that question is I know one and that's us, and that's the one I know most about. But no, this same group, the American Alliance of Museums, they go all over the country, mm -hmm. and they either accredit or don't accredit. This is a reaccreditation process. You try to say that word, reaccreditation. Reaccreditation. Did you just say it? I did. Okay, reaccreditation. I, I, I think, tried. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you, because that's important. We're, we're reaccredited for the next 10 years, and for them to come in and affirm everything we've done and compliment us for everything that we're doing, and then to say we kind of lead the way, especially in the application of technology. I say we're all about high tech, high touch. I'm going to say that twice if you don't mind. High tech, high touch. The high tech, you know you've been there. Mm -hmm. You can see all the exhibits from the trials, the various trials where we prosecuted the bad guys. Yeah. One of the exhibits in that museum is the very car. It's a car. The car that Timothy McVeigh was stopped in by Charlie Hanger. That's a big piece of evidence. So that's kind of high touch. You can see it. You can touch the gun that the bad guy had and the tickets that were written to arrest him and stop him and keep him in custody. But it's also high tech, mm -hmm. particularly for the young people. we got the high tech going on, the interactive exhibits, the Uncovered Discover Lab. You saw all that. We're very proud of it. And every ninth grader in Oklahoma City this year will come through the Memorial Museum because Aurora Laura, the new superintendent in this great community of our mm -hmm. schools, she's, she wants every ninth grader to come through our memorial and our museum. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's yeah. such a great learning process um, for sure. My last question to you, when you're starting a museum, I know it started a long time ago, but when you have all this, you know, evidence and artifacts and mementos, how do you even go about creating one vision to have for one museum? Right, right. How do you go about that? Well, th that, that is the question. Mm -hmm. And if, if you've got any free time, seriously, 
besides what you do here, and I know all about this show, you and Abigail, you guys are lighting it up, so congratulations. <laughs> you, but if you have any free time, we need somebody with your vision and other young people like you with some, a certain amount of intellectual curiosity about what we do on that sacred ground. Because here's the way I'm gonna answer your question. What we do there is all about a vision to reflect on the past, but resolve for the future. Like, like you may leave that museum, you've been there, and you can reflect on the past, but when you resolve for the future. What's your resolve for the future? It may be to stand against hate speech. Timothy McVeigh, who's now been executed, but the man who blew up that building was a decorated soldier, American soldier. But he said, essentially, love your country, but hate your government. Mm -hmm. Love your country, but hate your government. That's hate yep. speech. We should stand up against hate speech. Absolutely. So reflect on what happened there, but resolve in the future to stand up against hate speech. McVeigh should have turned to the ballot box, not the bullet box, not to violence. Mm -hmm. So we can all leave there and resolve to change our life in the future some way, somehow. Yeah. But with a young person like you asking that question, we're always thinking, you know, what, what's, our, what's our vision? What's the next step? What should we be doing to teach the next generation about what happened there and what we can learn from it? Did I answer your question, yes or no? It did, you did, okay. absolutely fantastic. But the, the entire event absolutely did change the future of our city here in the Metro. Mike Jerome, right. thank you so much right. for being with us here yeah. today. We well, appreciate it. Thanks for time. having me on. We'll be